welcome to the We Love Wrestling Spot once again. This is our May the Franchise Reign series sponsored in part with Battle Club Pro. Again, we have Joe Keen with us and yeah. also with us. We have a world traveler. We have a man with 50 caliber kicks. We have uh-huh. a man who's also returning to Battle Club Pro. We have Mr. Graham Bell. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well. Staying very busy. I'm sorry. I'm having to do this while I'm driving and got glasses on. I try to never do interviews with four eyes, but <laughs> the situation calls for it. <laughs> well, we got you here. Thanks for doing it while you're driving. Uh, before we start up, the first question I always ask is, why do you love wrestling or what started your love for wrestling? Uh, pretty simple. The convention, uh, my older brother got me into it. We got a PlayStation for Christmas one year, and we got WWF in your house for it. And I loved playing that game with him and his older friends. And one day he asked if I wanted to watch it on TV. And I was hooked from there. Nice. So, <clears throat> Joe King, you you the person who you was involved in bringing these sixteen people to your tournament. Tell, yeah. tell me, tell me about Graham, man. Why why you why you pick him? Well, listen. The first thing I'm gonna say about Graham is I am in love with his social media handles. <laughs> Instagram Bell is great, and then Merc with the main is is dope. Um. Why I chose Graham. So, if you notice, the tournament has a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. It's got guys that we've had from the lab, guys we've come across from uh, seeing them on other shows. We've got a couple of uh, women and non binary that were supposed to be part of WCW2. Um, and then I have Graham because. Graham has issues, or had issues, or probably still does, with Rob Killjoy. Now, since it's a singles tournament, he can't book the tag team. He kicked Lance out of uh, the sky. That went super viral. Well, you know, you've got the Ducks, and you've got Black Diamond Industries' very, very, very best. Uh, and then, you know, if you look further into it, we were talking yesterday, uh, the other day, Mick Drake is in it, and Mick Drake and Federated have problems with the Ugly Duckling. So, like, there's ties in everywhere. And Graham is just, he's you know, COVID screwed everything up, but in 2019, uh, he had, he made his way down to, uh, to Japan, and that was incredible. We put the spotlight on him, even though he didn't like it. Uh... So he's 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 ready for you know Luke and him are great as a team, but he's ready to burst out the scenes in the singles competition. So yeah, here's his opportunity. So Joe Keen, uh, you put him in a four way with Charles Mason. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Matt. Well, look, okay, I I feel a way about that. Uh, Max the Impala and Sahi. Yeah. Yeah, tell me that's not one of the most interesting yeah. matchups there is. That, that's that's crazy. That is crazy, right? The, the the biggest and most dominant force in that match is Max. Then you've got Charles, who is who's on a like serial killer kick billionaire playboy kind of doing whatever it is he wants to do. And obviously Graham, Graham's a merc. You know he's there to uh to end people and then saeev saeev is god i love saeev we've we've been tr- we've tried for the last few years to get saeev on a battle club show and it constantly doesn't pan out whether it's injury or schedule oh, right, I'm back. <laughs> but yeah that that matchup is interesting. Around my unprofessional. <laughs> you're good graham uh we brought in uh one of the a person, a part of the group that's sponsoring you for the show, uh, Danielle from the Pretty Hills. Oh, hey, good to meet you. Your, her mic is still muted, bro. Nah, oh, she should no, be good. I, just, I'm, I, oh, there you go. I didn't hear you. Uh, yeah, I'm out. There you go. Town, so I apologize, but I wanted to make sure that I'm, I'm here for all the heel shit. So I understand <laughs> that adversity is against you. 
Um, but I, I'm here for, for everything. Everything, whether win or wins. I'm, I'm going to keep bureaucratic. Oh, so is this who you got one of this match since y'all sponsoring him, Daniel? Not necessarily. He's, I mean, I'm, I'm here for everyone who's going to win. I'm not going to pick a winner right now. I'm going to I'm gonna make people tune in and show up on May 29th. I'm not going to let them know who we're talking with right now. I want you to show up to the show, pull up, and that you'll, when you, if you're in the building, you'll know who we're rooting for. All right, I, I, I'll go with that. So, Graham, uh, while you was gone, I was asked, I asked your team about your opponents, um, Max the Impaler, um, Saheed, and Charles Mason, which is this is a very interesting match. Um, looking at it, how you feel going into this match, man? I feel pretty good. Um, I don't have I've wrestled Max before. Um, it was a much different Max, a very green Max. It was only a few ma matches in, and they still whip my ass pretty good. But uh, <laughs> I feel good about my chances. I thrive I thrive in multi-person scenarios. I'm very good at using people against each other. I'm very good at taking advantage of multi-person scenarios. Um, the other two guys in there, Steve's just coming back to wrestling, and I think that could hurt him in a, in a four-way with three – competitors that are at the level me max and mason are at charles uh i don't know a ton about him prior to him gaining his wealth and becoming a choking pervert but um <laughs> i think he's he might be the most, least experienced person in this match but uh his uh his vices and his personal motivations could very possibly get in the way of a uh, good decision making that could lead to his victory I'd say Max is definitely the uh, the big threat in this. They're going to be real hard to take down, even like with our combined forces. Max doesn't stay down if you can get them down, and they're they're one of the most motivated intrinsically in this match. I know Max feels they have a lot of proof to themselves and to other people, so they're the ones that. I'm really game planning for, but ultimately, I mean, if there's a job to do, I get it done. Oh, okay. Joe Keem, you the owner. I did this on the last one. Who you got? Nah, <laughs> it's it's hard. It's hard to pick against Max. It's so hard to pick against Max. Like <clears throat> Max can. No offense to anybody in the match. Max can break anybody against that. That's across from her that night. You know, um, I I'm a little biased, you know. Charles I, Charles, in, Charles Mason is a monster, though. Like let's let's Charles, not. Yo, Charles Mason is really so, big, so again, big again, in a and, full then, and then let me right. Let me let me correct myself because I said her, they, um, anyone in their way, Max can murder. But I'll tell you what, man, Charles, his game is on a different level. Like I I witnessed him. Stay with Lee Moriarty, who's like everyone's starting to tout as the best independent wrestler in America. It's hard to deny that, but like he he was toe to toe with him, and then he actually got the win. Like Charles is Charles is he's picked a great school. People who have great lineage and and and, and history in wrestling, you know, are invested in him. Uh. But let's, but yo, Joe Keem, not to cut you off, let's also talk about Saeed's unpredictableness. He's a hot fire. I mean, he's yeah, no, a cruiserweight, he's not a cruiserweight. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta agree with Graham here, though. Like, Saeed is, is, I mean, he's got, he's gotten some, some pretty big wins, and he's, the, he's now the Pro Wrestling Magic Light Heavyweight Champion. Um, but he is still kind of making his way back into wrestling after a hiatus. So that could work against you, especially if you're not used to working multi-man matches. And like Graham had said, he thrives in them. Um, so the inexperience, or at least the lack of experience over the last year or so, could hurt Saeed. Mm -hmm. What you think? What you think? 
So I'm 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 gonna go uh, lean towards Max because I'm in cahoots with uh, THWF and that's their sponsor athlete. <laughs> um, I'm I'm leaning towards Graham also since the Pretty Hills are sponsoring him and I'm in cahoots. Uh, Sahib and um, Charles Nut. Well, shout out to Charles. I heard you from Indiana. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm going with it. Um. Graham, let me ask you this. I I came. I definitely with... think this is this is one of the most one of the important matches, though. So don't sleep, don't sleep on this whole show. But this match is they're, gonna be they're a very all important super match. unique. I I it was so fun putting it together because every match is just unique across the board. Like as weird as this sounds, the least unique match is the Darius Carter match because you know he handpicked his opponent and then he handpicked someone to help him win the match. Uh like but I mean other than that, like Casey Navarro, Matt McIntosh, Savannah Evans, you know, and uh oh my god, who's the who's the uh and Rob Kiljoy. Like that's just they're all so like random but in a beautifully chaotic way. Graham, uh, with all these people, uh, 15 other people in the tournament, is there anyone that you've seen in the tournament that you might have to be worried about? I know you said Max in this match, so let's say if you get past this first round matchup and you get in and, and you're going, is there anybody that you're looking out for in the tournament? All of them present their own kind of unique challenges. Um, like Mick Drake is by far, I'd say the the best athlete tournament. As Evans is just a killer. Rob Killjoy might have the most experience of anyone in the tournament. I can't think of everyone off the top of my head, but he's definitely up there. Has a ton of time and uh, Macintosh. Is just a hell of a wrestler. Is a challenge person scenario. Um, so there's there's not one single person that I'm kind of keeping an eye on. I've you know I've got scouting reports for pretty much all of them. The ones I don't, I'm working on. And uh, but also in scenarios like this, you can't you can't plan too much because it's four different four ways leading into a different four way. So the po- the combinations and possibilities are No, no, Graham, no, no, variation. No. You got a your 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 what? reconnaissance mission, your reconnaissance mission has uh, led you astray. It's four four ways that oh, no. lead into two semifinals and then one one-on-one final. I don't see this is news to me. <laughs> so that that does change things a little bit. That does still create a lot of variety though um i do like i said i thrive in multi-man situations i do i'm happy to hear that it goes into a four person kind of mini tournament after the four ways um that will make scouting a lot easier it'll make prep a lot easier and it'll make a makes game planning a lot more simple but see if i had to pick one person that i probably would hope to lose their four way It'd probably be Mick Drake. I think he's someone who would not do nearly as well in a multi-man as they would do uh, in a in a singles one-on-one competition. He's the guy I'd like to not make it into the the singles portion of the tournament for sure, for my own well-being. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you got to go with that. Let's see. Uh. I'm looking at this, Graham, because you know I told you beforehand this and research and talked about your tag team before we start recording. So, came across a match that I was actually live at that you had with your tag team partner. Against some guys I know. Hysteria in Bloomington, Illinois in about 2017 or 18, I believe. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, I- I'm glad I'll be able to uh, see what your evolution is now, you know, in, in singles competition. Also, guys, if you didn't know, I, I talked to Graham. Um, the database said he's been holding the tag team championship for over like a thousand days, but he said he nice. got the belt. 
but they still have him down as a champion, which is amazing. Still, <laughs> um, one in Arkansas, but that's that's just crazy to me. So, Graham, what last you question? Get it me. off of us. <laughs> <laughs> last question for me: Battle Club coming back. You know, it's not in New York; it's in New Jersey. Uh, how do you feel about the return of Battle Club? Made a franchise reign, and what Joe Kim is doing. How do I feel about it? I mean, Battle Club's one of the first places to treat me and Luke as a team like like a big deal. We we struggled for a while cuz we were good hands that could go everywhere and have killer matches and that's all we didn't really have a home base. We didn't have a local promotion that we'd be at every single month or every single week or what have you where we'd stay and get over which is a pattern you see with guys who explode onto bigger stages we kind of had to make our bones on the road and it's hard to create a um, consistent fan base in that respect when you're hopping town to town and you may not be somewhere for several months at a time you get brought in to put over a local tag team and then maybe you're not brought back again for you know six months or so joking and I'll give credit to the Wrestlers Lab guys, too, uh, Sweeney and Chris, because they saw us and they saw that we were willing to drive from the Midwest to New York for these opportunities, and they prioritized us because we prioritized them. And when I heard they were doing the tournament, and I'm more of a singles guy now, and I hit up Joe Keem and told him I wanted to be in the tournament, he prioritized me again because I was willing to prioritize Battle Club. So Battle Club means a lot to me for a lot of reasons. And it's very important to me that I'm in this tournament. Joe King sounds like a franchise champion talking right there. Yo, listen, I'll, uh, I'll never forget, you know, it was a conversation me and Graham had, and we just kind of, we just spoke, uh, you know, very candidly about the business end. And when I had found out what was actually going on, I was like, no, that'll never happen again. I took care of him and I promised to take care of him going forward. You know, I pride myself on making it such in such a way that you don't lose in battle club, whether it's, you know, in the pocket or out there in the ring with the crowd. Like the whole point is to elevate guys and girls and non-binaries so that again, they can make, get that contract, get that generational wealth, their kids and their kids, kids can be taken care of. That's my mission is to fix this business on this level. So that when they get to the next level, like it's it continues to be better. Battle Club is definitely one of the few places that have directly rewarded hard work. And I've been a lot of places. And I've worked very hard at places where it wasn't appreciated. And I've never felt underappreciated at Battle Club. And I can't imagine anyone else has either. Appreciate Joe, that. Every time we talk to somebody, Joe Keen, they saying great stuff about you, man. <laughs> I'm just I'm just trying to do right by them, man. It's it is it is awe inspiring and like just amazing what what these with these perform these performers, these athletes, these superstars do. You know, and for them to go, ever go unappreciated or undervalued is ridiculous. So I do what I gotta do to make sure that at le- there's at least someone in the country, you know, one promoter that loves and appreciates what they do, what they sacrifice. Sometimes when I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, you have to keep in mind, like, it, you know, I've been a fan, and I mean, it's on a record that Battle Club, Battle Club Pro is a really good promotion, and I'm not biased because I'm Northeast. It's just that they understand wrestling, they understand the history, they understand being, what being a fan is, but they all also super understand the business. So um, they take care of their people. So, I mean, what more to say? Like, what more? Why not be? you know, a part of this type of entity on, on an ongoing What's basis. That? So I, 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 listen, I'm a fan. I'm sorry to say so much, but so. All right. So Graham, the last thing that we do here, um, you're not probably familiar with our platform. We the mom and pop shop. We do what we call ourselves a put yourself over moment. That's where you let the people know your Instagram. If you got a store, anything where they can support you, anything you got coming up, we just want you to go ahead and put yourself over for the people. I oh, am. Yeah, my Instagram is Instagram5580. I'm just Graham Bell on Facebook. At, at 
Merc with a main on Twitter. I'm constantly posting about uh, upcoming shows and products and t-shirts. I got a store at Water Maneuver where you can get the uh, Full Metal Merc uh, shirt. And let's see, t next thing I have coming up is I have Crux Wrestling tomorrow in Tullahoma, Tennessee, All-Star Pro in Oklahoma City on Sunday, and then a whole bunch of stuff coming up after that. The calendar's filling up again pretty quick. Okay, okay. Let's see. He's, he's booking busy, booking busy. Let's see. Joe King, go ahead, put over Battle Club Pro. I, I Listen, it's not what we do. I'm not going to put it over any. Okay. What I will do is put I'll over put the Grandma show in. Put the show put in Grand. Grand over. I'll, I'll I'll promote the show, but I'm gonna yeah, put Grand gonna, over. Okay, do that. Like I said, you know, <laughs> from that viral moment, because the timing on that would it had to be perfect, and it was. From from that, from being part of, you know, making Mitch Valens uh, dream come true of ha of teaming with with uh, Matt Tremont, even though it didn't go anywhere because the company ended up folding. Like just being there, being down, being open, like. Man, Graham's one of the best. He really is, and it's, uh, he's, an, he's another one, like Trev and like Graham. It's only a matter of time before they're scooped up and everyone recognizes, you know. I, I, I try to specialize I, in people who might not recognize how great these guys are yet so that when they grit, get great, I'm like, ah, I told you, and I've been new. So now you got egg on your face. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, May 29th. And Joe Keem, I, pre I appreciate that, man. <laughs> I got to jump off here real quick, get back to the shoot, but I love you guys, and thank you so much. Love you too, man. You be safe. Will do. Take care, guys. Thanks for having me. No Later. Problem. Go ahead, Joe King. Keep putting over the show in green. <laughs> uh, May 29th. May the franchise reign. Two shows one day, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Please be there. It's going to be incredible. Uh, first show back in a, well over a year. You know, the pandemic, COVID kind of screwed everything up. Uh, and like I like I told you yesterday, there's there's big plans for July. Uh, I'm looking to do uh, another anything you can do all intergender show. I definitely want to do another WCW. Uh, we got a, a five year anniversary that we need to go super big on because we didn't get a chance to do our four year anniversary. So huge things, huge things coming. Uh, I can't wait. All right, Danielle. I need you to uh, go ahead put yourself over because you got a lot of sponsored talent on this um, on this show coming up. So go ahead and tell the people how they can get in touch with Pretty Hill. We have a lot. We have a lot of sponsored talent, but I'm really gonna just um, put over the show um, and say you you have to pull up. Like it's a great show. It's a stacked card. Two shows, one day. Bringing wrestling back to the Northeast. We've had quite a bit of wrestling so far, but this is one of the premier shows that you should be at. Definitely, you know, try to watch it online. But I think I'm encouraging everyone to pull up, watch it in person. Put put the other pretty heel on camera. I know she there. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, let me see if I because this is not even my phone. Let me let me just turn the camera around. What up, pretty heel? Oh, uh, on. What up, Pretty Hills? You said, what up, Pretty Hills? <laughs> First hey! time ever. <laughs> <laughs> First yeah, time so you get all three on camera. We're all together having a business meeting. Nice. <laughs> we're having a so, business meeting. That's what they do. They uh, put the show over. They put the sponsors <laughs> over. So, guys, May 29th, Ridgefield, New Jersey. It's not New York, so I may show up. Um, at the... <laughs> Sheridan Building, I believe it is. This is the Still Sheridan, Sheridan Building. Building. Yep. Look at that. Um, 3 p.m., 7 p.m., two shows. I said it all. I, I said it on the on my Mission Pro review. They got some of the top talent coming from indie wrestling, so you need to pull up and be there and support it. I'm Terry, and like I always say, if I love wrestling and you love wrestling, then we, we love, love wrestling. <laughs> hey, it's too sweet for the culture. <laughs>